So this is currently my setup, right? So I have the camera over here. Um, then we have the voltage over there. And this one goes to all to the plus, then the minus over there. Oh, minus has to be in though. So the minus over here and a monitor over there. So if I turn this on, basically what it should do is the monitor should go on and everything. So let me put up the voltage a little bit. So let me show you. So what I did was, because I didn't want to mess around there, I decided to take the plus that goes here from there. However, like I said, this one comes from um, this box, so it doesn't really matter because this plus cable that's there is just plated over there, right? So here's the monitor that I'm currently testing. As you can see, it's upside down. However, if I move this around, you can see it's exactly the same. So this is basically my parking monitor, which is quite simple, as you see. So in the next step, I'm going to show you how it is to connect it to basically any car. Um, as you can see, well, it's using 11.9 volts. However, I can lower this like to about there, right? And I still have a monitor, I still have everything, 7.2 volts. I can lower this, the amp, as well, a little bit, and go a little here. And from here, it gets fuzzy, right? So that's 5.9 volts. So if I take it six, six and six, six and a half ish, it works. So basically, this monitor and the uh, and the lights and everything, um, they work basically on 6.6 .6 volts with a 0.24 amp. Um, so that's how basically you build the cable. Um, however, this cable is just for a testing purpose and it doesn't um, go there. That's actually to power your parking sensors. Because the parking sensors need a plus cable as well, so this is the one to use. Um, because normally your car uh, monitor or your display, whatever you have, goes to the front of your car, this cable will be, uh, for my car, will be going to the front as well. So finding your uh, reverse trigger is kind of a bitch to do. Um, and seeing if the camera works is not a bitch to do. So uh, what I always decide to do is to take my monitor that I showed you before, right? It's over here, um, plug it in like this and just put it somewhere there, right? So this allows you to well, check and see if your uh, lights are working. So I have the monitor there, the, um, the video cable that goes from here to my camera. So the next thing to do is to find the power source. Well, the power source is over there. Um, on this car, it's actually quite a bit to do. Um, it's a lot easier on the Astra. Um, but as I say, you can take the power supply from anywhere. It's just a reverse trigger that's always hard to find. So let me show you. So one of the things I used to do is to check what my uh, permanent life is or ignition life. So that's fuse number 15 over there, um, which um, turns on my monitor at my as you can see, my camera. Um, where am I? There. There we go. So, with the reverse lights on and the monitor on, um, so let's see what happens when I decide to turn to turn the car off. So I turn the car off. Right, and my monitor is off. 
and everything as well. However, the car is in reverse. So if you take it out of reverse and you will see that it's still there. This is because I decided to mount my yellow cable, as you see there, right to the plus. If you want a camera uh, that's always on, for example, um, to see who's driving behind you, you can just do it like this. However, if you want a camera that goes on when you turn in, uh, when you put the car in reverse, don't use the setup. So we know fuse number 15 is the one we could use for power. The next step in this process is to find your um, reverse trigger. However, what I'm going to tell you is not what you should do, but it works. So <laughs> that cable over here, right? I decided to wrap around fuse 15 on the plus side, which is on this side. So the nearest to the end of the car and then um, take the reverse trigger as over there. And let me show you where the reverse trigger is so you don't have to poke around. So to find the reverse trigger, it's actually quite simple. It's the second one from the bottom. And currently I have a white and black cable in there. This is not the way to do it, of course. The best way is to split the black and white cable and put this one straight there. Um, as you can see, I didn't need that much cable um, compared to the Astra, for example, uh, because this is so close by. In my twin top, the box was all the way over here, uh, means that I need a longer cable. In this case, it's actually quite short. So, as you see, everything is off, right? So, let me put the car in reverse for you. Here we go, it's in reverse. And as you can see, monitor's on, camera's working. As you can see, let me turn it around. I'm there, here's my camera. So, this is the setup to use. It's quite simple, just tuck out the wires away and um, put all the cables from the back of the car to the front of the car. But that's basically it. So the next step um, in this process is to get the cable from there over to where your camera is, over there. The best way to do this is to um, unscrew this tail light it's only like four screws or so in it and there's one hole you can see it there is basically unused so that's the second one right because if the tail light goes in like this that hole is covered um, so what you want to do is this cable over here um, that, that powers your camera you want to um, do it through the second hole over here um, if you can see a second hole over there and then go down and make sure it goes in there where the bumper is um, you can also if you're lucky enough you could do it through here um, and then smash it down there um, so it doesn't matter if you do it through there or there depending on what you think is easier um, and then it will go down then you have to pry around to be able to uh, connect the um, cable to uh, the camera. But since you're busy already here, um, it's a good time to get your um, audio video cable and to it the same way. Um, normally I use some like cable, um, elect electric tape or something, just to mount them um, at the same place so you always know that they are there. So, um, as I said, well, the thing was that my cable, well, one of those things broken, um, so I decided to use my audio cable, or my video cable, to just go to here, and we will put it slightly there, um, to make it easier. 
because there's always a little bit of well, space um, and plus those won't fit through the hole however since I started from the bottom I will show you exactly how it is so I mounted the uh, the camera already there um, and basically you go lay under the car and um, wire everything up so let me show you how it looks from the from under the car then so when you lay under the car right so you can see it here and let me see if you can see it there so the yellow one is coming from the camera the white one is my AV cable um, the black the red one is from the camera again and the um, the black one goes to um, the live feed so as you can see oh maybe not I don't know there's enough space here to basically wire up everything so the next thing you want to do is um, you don't want stuff hanging about um, so take a tie grip and just wire everything up somewhere there right um, so all the cables are together then you can um, clean it up so let me show you so after you figured out where you want everything well I just did a tie grip and Here's the cable hanging again, um, and I'm going towards the exhaust there. So, when you look into this, right, uh, there's no good place really to um, hang anything, right? So, the other thing you don't want is you don't want those cables to get wet. Um, because you don't want everything to get wet, you need to find another tie grip somewhere. Um, or make it tight tight enough so it doesn't disconnect while driving what I tend to do is to just tape the connections so no water can go in and everything is nice and tidy so this is how it looks okay well basically the connections all wired up so this side goes to the camera and that side goes to the car quite easy isn't it now put a lightly slicker tie grip on this metal piece right um, which holds both the cable for the camera and the one that goes whatever in the car um, then it goes all left over there and it doesn't get hot and it doesn't mess around either so when we go away from here you can see the cables are coming up from here so it's, all this cable is left over so from the inside just starting to pull so it's tight enough um, but you don't want it too tight because it's um, the rear lights are there so then we have this cable over here that goes basically in there and then just start pulling the cable until you think it's good enough to do so what I want is a little bit of space um, so it can do freely so I will normally do tape this as well or I'll put a tie grip on it so the other thing I did was I extended the cable like I showed before where it has to go to so I cut here and you can see those are the same so i know all the yellow is the reverse trigger um, because it goes to the yellow to the box as well um, so basically this should work so let's test we have the cable coming out from there like as you can see the uh, video cable so here we go we have the monitor here and let's put this together right so you have the cables here you have the monitor there and let's see so my keys are there so the car is still in reverse i didn't ever change that since my video from yesterday and here we go perfect working so the only thing you have to do now is tidy everything up make sure the cables um, from 
the AV cable goes nice and tidy to the front of the car and that's it so the next step is to get the um, video cable from the back here to the front so it's quite easy come here go back there um, here is a little hole well, you unable to see but it basically allows you to go under, under that seat there take this apart we'll just get it off doesn't you don't need to unscrew or anything um, lift the seat a little bit you will be able to get under here um, oh. get under here and basically you can put it all the way there and all the way here and then go up from there to there so that's it well here's the end result so what I did was use my temporary monitor to um, show my reverse um, well I have this one but okay no she deloaded I don't care I mean so here we go so um, this is the default display on the vector um, this one is going to be changed and repositioned as well so um, I'm not going to tell you where but this is going to be gone and replaced with CD70 display with a CD70 radio and then take the radio out I will take the radio out and um, replace it with something else however this display is going to be gone anyway so as temporary option I have this so this is just a simple monitor to um, it's about the same size a little bit less I think um, but basically um, this is my reverse uh, monitor so let's say I press the clutch you can see there and I go in reverse it will turn on my monitor so I can see um, well I guess that's my a monitor when it goes on so I don't have parking sensors yet um, only in front but those are original ones that don't work so um, the thing was that I wanted the monitor working which is absolutely working fine so um, what people say is when you start the car the issue um, comes, comes so I'm going to start the car here we go like I haven't used this car for a while no. so there we go car starting and everything else so I will put it in reverse now and here we go everything is absolutely working perfectly so this is how you fix the uh, parking sensors on the uh, Vauxhall um, vector